Habari, Habari once again, friends. It's a pleasure again to come together with you on another day to share with you from my heart. And so I pray, my prayer is that um, whatever you hear today, since we'll be talking about um, struggles through homeschooling, this is going to be a part one series. Um, that because I'm currently still going through the struggles, I want to be able to share with you whatever I can uh, so that you can still find hope and strength knowing that through Christ, all things are possible. Amen. And, and so we will um, kneel in prayer as we seek the Lord. Dear most gracious loving Father, we come to you as our children, as children that you have said in Matthew 7, 7, that if we ask, all, if we ask according to your will, that you will um, answer according to your will. And so, Lord, we, we come to you in prayer, believing that the key to our struggles and problems is through prayer and when we come to you through prayer is by faith that the door is unlocked and every and things that we uh, are seeking that you will uh, um, supply our needs according to um, the time that is fit. And so, Lord, as I come to you, once again, I ask that you will be in my mind, be in my head, that you will uh, bring this presentation to a cl clear understanding to your children, and, and that as we uh, learn from each other, <clears throat> that we will be able to uh, draw closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. <laughs> Homeless struggles, we all have it. And I just want to, to let you know that you are not alone. As you make this decision to homeschool your children, and you may feel tired, you may feel overwhelmed or stressed out. But I come to you as a mom, homeschooling one child, but has one child in, in the public school as well. I have learned a few things and over the years about how to avoid burnout in my homeschool. I still get the burnouts now and again, but I believe that God will um, is still see me through them. One of the most common reasons for worriness and frustration among homeschooling parents is the weight of self-inflicted deadliness and stand, uh, deadlines and standards. It is good, of course, to have goals in mind, but we must always ask ourselves, am I seeking to do the Lord's will or am I merely pursuing my own agenda? As Seventh-day Adventist Christians' families, we, we need to view homeschooling not as a glorious end in and of itself, 
but rather as a means to an end. The main goal is to raise children who love the Lord and are committed to following Christ. It is not to produce robots that can recite random facts and data at the drop of a hat. What a child knows is really insignificant compared to what he or she believes. We must move beyond facts to convictions. And I strongly believe that if we move away just from the facts and work on their hearts, they will be truly convicted in what they believe. It is vital that our children know, one, what they believe, two, why their beliefs are true, three, how to articulate their beliefs, and four, how to live their beliefs consistently. Our, our main goal is getting the right answers on uh, getting the right answers on a test is meaningless unless a child know how to apply those truths to everyday life. Non -applica non applicable knowledge is is worthless. As parents, we want our our children to excel academically, yes, and, and homeschoolers usually do. But our main motivation for homeschooling, however, should not be just academic skills. Um, instead, we should teach them to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these, including academic skills, things, will be added to us. Once I knew why for my focus and why I wanted to homeschool my children is where is, is what held the foundation of my desire to continue to homeschool, to have that have that, that desire always planted within me, to not allow the Satan to take control of it or to um, uh, eliminate it from my mind, even through the struggles. And so as, as parents who are looking to homeschool, you want to still keep that focus, but through prayer, uh, Jesus will help you through, the, through your struggles, and he will be able to find the, um, have you see the time to know, okay, this, this time is when I want you to homeschool. I don't know if that made sense to you all, but I, did that make sense to you? Yes. Okay. We should always stay focused on our long-term goals, but we must consistently follow the leading of the Spirit of Christ. Why are we homeschooling? Our main objective should be to fulfill our God-given obligation, which is found in um, Proverbs 22, verse 6. Train up, train up our children in the way they should go, and when they grow up, they shall not depart from it. And there's many other uh, passages in the Bible, such as Psalm 78. Uh, you're welcome to write these down. Um, Psalm 78 and Deuteronomy 6, verse, um, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6 and 11. That stresses out um, the importance of teaching that God's laws to our children. What is the purpose of an education? God's prim primary reasons for commanding you to teach your own children are to enable God to purify you as the parent. As you allow the fire and pressure of the homeschool setting to make you into pure goal. Second, to help your, child, your children know and love him and become prepared to serve him. God desires for us to have close family relationships and that we have to, um, to learn to do is to build, build that family relationship 
even within socialization. And we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that soon. And he uses the process of family discipleship to develop godly character in both the children and the parents. God has established and he designed parents to be the primary influences in shaping their children's values. Parents can't expect to, to receive a godly harvest unless they labor during the planting. And so um, we go back to the sower planting the seed. And we as a parent are like the sower. We must learn to view home education as a lifestyle, not just per se home school in comparing it with a public school, but homeschooling is developing that binding that child's learning with the lifestyle that he's already in. And not merely an academic alternative. Use, use every available moment to teach eternal principles. Developing a biblical worldview in children is not something that happens by accident. It is taught by formal instruction and caught by the godly example of the parents. So children learn, um, I think in my, my next presentation I'll share, share a poem, but children learn by examples. And, and as, as he or she, um, as a child, see how you carry yourself in your household as a parent, then you're, you're teaching, teaching your child how to become an adult. And, Hello. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, but uh, you are earphones were you are not audible, Sam. Minister, go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay, uh, can you can you hear me? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. How, how to keep homeschool and life in a balance. <coughs> Excuse me. And, <coughs> excuse me for a moment. <coughs> as, as read in, in the spirit of prophecy, <coughs> Excuse me. Um, upon all children. <coughs> oh, sorry. <coughs> sorry. Sorry about that. Upon all parents, there rests the obligation of giving physical, mental, and spiritual instruction. It should be, it should be the, ob the object <coughs> of every parent to secure to his child a well-balanced symmetrical character. Uh, hold on a second. I need to see what I'm seeing here. This is this is a work of no small magnitude and importance, a work requiring earnest thought and prayer. <clears throat> oh, sorry. A work requiring earnest thought and prayer. Okay. Um, seeing a message here. Is that Sammy? Are you sending me a message? Yes. Okay. Um, can't seem to, sorry, can't seem to get to it. Hey, go ahead. <laughs> okay, so um, counsel to parents and teachers and st students instruct, show us how we can, um, can get that balance. And that is first to, to um, set that foundation 
that foundation must be led, a framework, a strong and firm erected, and then day by day, the work of building, polishing, perfecting must go forward. Uh, a tip and how, how, how I have been able to uh, get that, that well balanced is to have a notebook or a calendar planner to jot down uh, lessons that you want to um, teach your children. Uh, could be a par could be the parables, could be the um, any object lessons that you may find online. Um, could be um, the family Bible lessons from the sunlight if you choose to do that. Uh, the character qualities, uh, jot them down in in and with appointments. If you have appointments, I know for me, um, I do get a get appointments for my children, whether to see the eye doctor or dentist or a checkup, um, write them down in your planner because it will be a part of the, the lifestyle of your children and they're learning, they're learning from these experiences. Um, trips to the market and so, and so forth. Homeschooling socialization. In a book entitled The Hurried Child, Dr. Raymond Moore, a well-known pioneer of homeschooling and author of more than 60 books and articles, has done extensive research on homeschooling and socialization. In it, he writes, the idea that children need to be around many other youngsters in order to be socialized is perhaps the most dangerous and extravagant myth in education and child rearing today. He, con he concludes that, that after analyzing over 8,000 early childhood studies, children are best socialized by parents, not other children. That is a pretty bold statement especially in light of the strong opinions of those in the public education system. But time, and but time and time again, research continues to show that not only do homeschool students equal their public school counterparts in social, in social skills, but they at many times excel in them. On homeschool.com, the author of the post uh, what, about what About Socialization, shares an interview that she had with Diane Flynn Keith. In her words, socialization is actually meant to prepare children for the real world, which means learning to interact and deal with people of all ages, races, and backgrounds, she says. And, and so... Um, one, a few things that I can share with you on socialization is, um, <clears throat> is a social media. Uh, there are video chats that I have, have experience on, um, on myself with individuals that I have now become friends with. Um, we have been friends for, I would say now going on maybe two years now since we've met on Facebook and we have used video chats through Messenger, um, through WhatsApp. And I know that there's gonna be a time that the social media will no longer be, be existent, but, um, but God has, has a, I believe that God has, has allowed this to happen, that even when we're far apart from each other, um, we can still connect with people and I uh, use it in a way, in a positive way for our children to also meet other children and to interact. There's also, um, I've used the library. I've taken my children to the library. They've gotten to meet other children um, in, during their playtime there. 
there's the parks, the playgrounds, and there's a family gathering with friends. And so um, that's pretty it on part one that I have with my slides. Um, but there's other things that I would like to address um, with our struggles. And my current struggle, um, even in preparing in this camp meeting, um, I can truly give God praise for al allowing me to, re to meet a couple of friends that have, have been helping me even through now um, to allow me to spend these, mo these moments with you all. And so while I am here, I have, have a friend who is helping me by watching my son. And so if, if you, I don't know your relationship with um, friends there, but connect, I would say connect, connect with someone that you know, that you, that you feel comfortable with and, and is willing to bear bear each other's burdens and as we do so um, then we will have we will have that special bond with each other and 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 con creating that that um, that social network that we as homeschoolers need uh, homeschool parents need and so I strongly strongly uh, suggest that if you can do that um, is to uh, create a social network because through that special social network you'll find um, your fruits your 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 fruits will be uh, rewarding does that make sense to everyone okay and um, last thing that I would like to, um, to have us keep in mind as, we're, as we soon to close is we are homeschooling because we want to raise children who love Jesus. We won't be so, so frustrated if our child doesn't understand phonics or chemistry. In trying to teach academics, are we achieving our ultimate goal? Uh, developing godly character. Nothing is so important that it overrides our relationship with God and each other. What does God expect us expect of us? In Micah 6, 8, and I recall sharing this verse with you, and I'll share it again, is that he has shown you, O man, what is good and what requires of you to do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God. And Ecclesiastes 12, verse 13, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. And so um, I pray that, uh, that you all have received the blessing so far in what I have shared as we um, look into these struggles together. Um, and, and so this is part one. I will be sharing more um, tomorrow on these struggles. And I pray that um, things will come into play, uh, come in, come in, will fit for you as you continue to in this decision of homeschooling. Yeah.
The most gracious loving Father, our hearts are filled with gratitude and love for you at this moment. We thank you so much for your mercy that are so new every morning. We thank you for your son who is the light of this world and the light of our salvation. Whom shall we fare? For the Lord is the strength of our life, of whom we should not be afraid. When, when the wicked or even enemies or foes or people that come in our way that may, may talk negative about homeschooling, Lord, we pray, dear Father, that we will continue to see that homeschooling is not just for academics. But homeschooling is allowing the child to see and to blend in in the lifestyle that he is already living. And so we, want, we thank you for this ministry of homeschooling. And we thank you that we as parents can be like the sower, to sow the seed of love, faithfulness, goodness, gentleness, all the fruits that, that your son and yourself of the Holy Spirit presides. And so we, as we leave each other, Lord, we, we pray that you will continue to bind us in love and help us to, to support each other. I thank you for this opportunity to meet each and every one and the ones that even ask the questions. I thank you for them. May you continue to bless and keep and, and abide in each one of us. For we know that when we call on your son, he is able to, to help us all the way. He will carry us through. We thank you in your son, your beloved son, name, and let the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable, in thy, be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen.